The movie I will recap now, its name is Finding Nemo. The movie begins showing a clownfish, whose name is Marlin. Marlin lives in the Great Barrier Reef with his wife Coral. They are also keeping many eggs there. Both of them are deciding on different names, and Coral likes the name Nemo too much. Meanwhile, a barracuda fish arrives there. Seeing it, Coral starts fighting with Barracuda to protect the eggs. But Coral is eventually killed in the fight, and all their eggs are destroyed, except for one damaged egg, and Marlin names it Nemo. Marlin keeps that one egg very carefully. Now some time has passed and Nemo has grown up. He is very excited for his first day of school. Marlin is overprotective of Nemo and he doesn't want Nemo to attend the school. But this year, Nemo is determined to go to school. We see that Nemo is born with stunted right fin, due to damaging of egg, which makes Marlin assume that Nemo cannot swim properly. Being protective, Marlin reaches Nemo's school, and informs the teachers of Nemo's stunted fin. Nemo doesn't like this and he argues with Marlin. Nemo becomes defiant and he is determined to prove himself. In order to prove himself, he swims away from everyone and approaches a speedboat. Marlin is asking him to get back at once. Meanwhile, two scuba divers capture Nemo in a bag, and take him away. Seeing this, Marlin pursues the boat, but he gets thrown away, due to the stream coming from the propeller of the speedboat. Marlin cannot see the speedboat so he rushes inside the water, and inquires if anyone has seen a speedboat. He collides with a blue tang fish whose name is Dory. Dory suffers from acute short-term memory loss, but she offers to help Marlin. Marlin and Dory are talking, meanwhile, Three sharks arrive there who have sworn to never eating fish. They inquire the shark about human speedboat and the shark takes them to a place. Reaching the place, Marlin finds the diver's mask which looked like the mask of the scuba diver. Marlin observes the mask and Dory tries to take the mask. In the process, Marlin accidentally hits Dory on the nose with the mask. Dory's nose starts bleeding. The scent of the blood makes one of the shark lose her control, and she attacks Marlin and Dory. Marlin and Dory flee to save themselves, after setting off a ring of old naval mines which makes them unconscious. On the other side, Nemo is kept in an aquarium in the office of a dentist, whose name is Philip Sherman. Nemo meets other creatures in the aquarium tank, which includes, Yellow Tang Bubble, Starfish Peach, Blowfish Bloat, Cleaner Shrimp Jacques, Damselfish Deb and Royal Grandma Gurgle, led by Gil, a Moorish idol. They call themselves Tank Gang. Nemo comes to know that the dentist is planning to give him as a gift to his young niece, whose name is Darla. Darla is notorious and she has killed her last fish. Hearing this, Nemo realizes his mistake, and he wants to go back to his father Marlin. Now, Gil makes a risky escape plan. He plans that Nemo will jam the filter using a pebble, because he is the only one that can easily fit inside the tube. As a result, the fish tank will get dirty. So in order to clean the tank, the dentist will be forced to keep the fishes inside the plastic bag. Then they will escape by rolling the plastic bag out of the nearby window and go into the harbor. On the other side, Marlin and Dory come to their senses but the human mask falls into the dark depth of the sea. Marlin and Dory go after the mask and they run into an anglerfish, which attacks them and starts chasing them. Dory suddenly remembers that she can read, and she memorizes the address mentioned on the mask, with the help of the glowing light of anglerfish. After that, Marlin and Dory escape from there to save their lives. Now Marlin has a huge task to find the place mentioned in the address. In order to do this, he inquires a group of moonfish about the address. The group of moonfish tells them that they need to follow the East Australian current, and go in its direction. The group of moonfish also warns them, that when they reach the trench, then they must go from below the trench and not try to go over it. But Marlin does not pay attention to the warning, and believes that going over the trench is a safer route. Marlin and Dory arrive at the trench but instead of going from under the trench, they proceed from over the trench. There they run into a crowd of jellyfishes. Dory advises to proceed by jumping on the jellyfishes in order to avoid getting sting. They begin to move but despite the safety, they eventually get sting and become unconscious. On the other side, Nemo is still in the aquarium and the time has come to execute their plan. Gil asks Nemo to stop the fan of the tank. Nemo reaches the fan chamber and successfully stops the fan using a pebble. He is then attempting to get back through the filter tube, but the pebble comes out of its place and the fan restarts. All other fishes rescue Nemo in time using a plant, before he gets sucked into the fan blade. Nemo and Gil both get scared, and Gil drops his idea of escaping the aquarium. On the other side, 
Marlin and Dory wake up and finds that he is lying on top of a turtle. Marlin tells the turtle that he needs to go to East Australian Current. The turtle tells Marlin that right now they are in East Australian Current and they are all going to Sydney. On the way, Marlin tells baby turtles about his quest to find his son Nemo. This story of Marlin's quest, spreads across the ocean amongst all the sea creatures, and now all the creatures are discussing about Nemo and Marlin. This story reaches a pelican whose name is Nigel. Nigel informs the tank gang about Marlin and his brave quest to find his son Nemo, overcoming all difficulties. Nemo gets inspired listening about his father's bravery and he takes another attempt to jam the fan of the filter tube. Nemo succeeds in jamming the filter tube of the aquarium. As a result, the aquarium gets filled with green algae. The dentist arrives in his office and plans to clear the aquarium. Hearing this, the tank gang gets happy that they will be kept in plastic bags. On the other side, Marlin and Dory have exit the East Australian current but are consumed by a blue whale, and both are trapped inside. Dory tries to replicate the whale's voice, and the whale throws them out through its blowhole at the Sydney Harbour. Marlin is delighted to reach the Sydney Harbour and searches for the boat that took Nemo. Next day, the tank gang wakes up to find that the tank is already cleaned, because the dentist has installed a new high-tech filter, and now there is no need to take fishes out of the tank. So, the plan of the tank gang is ruined. Meanwhile, the dentist takes Nemo out of the aquarium and keeps him inside a plastic bag for his niece Darla. Nemo tries to roll the plastic bag towards the window, but the dentist catches him and puts the plastic bag in a tray. Now Nemo cannot roll out anywhere. On the other side, Nigel picks Marlin and Dory in its mouth and flies away and tells them that it knows where Nemo is kept. Meanwhile, many seagulls arrive there to eat Marlin and Dory, but Nigel protects them from getting eaten. On the other side, Darla arrives and Nemo acts dead, hoping that the dentist will flush him into the toilet, and this way he can reach the ocean. But the dentist proceeds to put him in the dustbin. At the same time, Nigel arrives there with Marlin and Dory in its mouth. Nigel creates a chaos in the office on Marlin's command. Nemo is still acting dead, so Marlin presumes him to be actually dead. Dentist manages to drive Nigel out of the office. But Darla gets hold of the plastic bag in which Nemo is kept. Darla begins to shake the plastic bag rudely and asks Nemo to wake up. Gil is watching all this, so he shoots himself from the tank onto Darla's head. Darla gets panicked and drops the plastic bag. The plastic bag bursts, and Nemo escapes through the drain nearby. The dentist quickly puts Gil back inside the aquarium to save him. The tank gang is delighted because Nemo will finally reach the ocean through the drainage. On the other side, Nigel puts Marlin and Dory in the harbor with a heavy heart. Marlin says goodbye to Dory and begins his journey towards home. Dory also loses her memory about Marlin. Meanwhile, Nemo also reaches there and meets Dory and inquires about his father. But Dory does not remember anything. But then she reads the word Sydney written on a drainpipe and suddenly she remembers everything that has happened. She hugs Nemo and is extremely happy. Now Dory and Nemo proceed in the direction of Marlin and they find him. Marlin and Nemo are reunited. But another tragedy occurs, and Dory gets trapped in the net of a fishing trawler along with other fishes. Being small, Nemo enters the net and with the help of his father, he tells all the fishes to swim downwards. The fishes swim towards bottom and their combined effort breaks the boat's net and they all escape. Coming home to the reef, Marlin wakes up Nemo for school. Marlin has become more confident, and now he trusts Nemo, and believes that Nemo can stay independently and responsibly. Marlin and Dory see off Nemo to his school. The movie completes with this lovely scene.